All right, so I got a pretty important story here if you're somebody who cares about democracy or involving more people in the democratic process, because ever since Donald Trump lost and Republicans launched this like full scale conspiracy theory nonsense shit about how the election was stolen and there was wide scale voting fraud, they've used this effort in their propaganda campaign to now be pushing for literally hundreds of bills across the country that are really just trying to engage in voter suppression. That's essentially what all of these bills are doing. And I'm going to give you a specific example with my home state of Georgia, uh, where we just managed to flip or Democrats just managed to flip the two Georgia Senate seats with Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff taking those seats from Republicans. Um, and so, of course, in response, Republicans want to engage in massive voter suppression efforts. Um, and this is really just because of the simple truth that the more people that are engaging in voting, the more people that show up to vote, the less likely it is that Republicans are going to win those elections. That's just the reality. Republicans, their policy agenda is really not that popular. And so instead of correcting for that and actually trying to put forward an agenda that people can get behind, uh, they just choose to engage in voter suppression efforts um, like we have here as an example. In Georgia. So the Republican Party of Georgia advanced its sweeping assault on voting rights Monday by pushing through the state Senate legislation that would roll back no excuse absentee voting and ramp up voter ID requirements, a move that drew outrage from activists who dubbed the measure one of the worst voter suppression bills in the country. As the uh, Atlanta J Journal Constitution explained, SB 241 would reduce the availability of absentee voting, restricting it to those who are at least 65 years old, have a physical disability, or are out of town. Uh, the bill, which now heads to the GOP led State House of Representatives, would also require Georgians who wish to vote ab absentee to provide a driver's license number, a state ID number, or other identification. Fair Fight Action, a voting rights group organized by uh, an organized organization founded by uh, former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams, who I have a lot of disagreements with, but if there's one thing I can give her a lot of credit for, it's that she actually has been doing significant work and making significant progress in getting more people in Georgia registered to vote and participating in that sense. Um, so credit to her on that. Uh, warned that the Republican bill is an attack on voters and a blatant attempt by the GA GOP to placate far-right extremists. Over 1.3 million Georgians voted by mail in 2020, leading to historic turnout. Now, Georgia Republicans, led by Lieutenant Governor uh, Geoff Duncan, would ban no-excuse mail voting. Um, the group said SB 241 harms Georgians of all political persuasions and undermines Georgians' democracy. In addition, it would also grant the state legislature unprecedented power to fire and replace election officials at will, an attack on local elections and off uh, offices and county governments. Um, and to add insult to injury, many of the provisions in SB 241 levy massive new costs that would be passed on to counties and taxpayers over $28 million, according to an expert analysis. The GOGOP, the GA GOP is forcing counties and everyday citizens to foot the bill for voter suppression. So obviously this comes at a time where specifically in Georgia, we've had a significant increase in participation from uh, black Americans here in Georgia who have been participating in the voting process. And that has been in large part due to organizations like Fair Fight and like Stacey Abrams, who have been getting people registered to vote. And so, of course, uh, Republicans don't want uh, black people to vote. That's one of their like main tenets of their uh, their platform. They try to keep it on the low. But sometimes um, they actually just come out and say it really out loud and say the quiet part out loud. This isn't in Georgia, but I think this is a perfect example of the Republican mindset and how they are thinking about these things and how blatant it is that they really just understand like, we need less people to vote because that gives us a better chance of winning. Um, just blatant disregard for democracy. So here's a statement from John Kavanaugh, a GOP member of Arizona's House of Representatives, told CNN about voting. So he said, there's a fundamental difference between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats value as many people as possible voting and they're willing to risk fraud. Obviously, yeah, you're willing to risk, risk fraud in a little bit of a sense, but there's no evidence for widespread fraud. This isn't like a legitimate issue that they're bringing up here that somehow in our elections, there's all of this rampant fraud that's going on. They just lie and exaggerate about all of that. That's not a real issue in the way that they portray it as, but he continues on, Republicans are more concerned about fraud, so we don't mind putting security measures in that won't let everybody vote, but everybody shouldn't be voting. Not everybody wants to vote, and if somebody is uninterested in voting, that probably means that they're totally uninformed on the issues. Quantity is important, but we have to look at the quality of votes as well. Quantity is important, but we have to look at the quality of the votes as well. He's saying the quiet part out loud here, if you're not understanding that. What he's basically saying is, you peasants 
are simply not of a high enough quality to be voting. In other words, when they're engaging in these voter suppression experts, in these voter suppression efforts that almost always, if not literally always, disproportionately harm minorities' ability to participate in democracy, what they're telling you is your vote, yourself, is not of a high enough quality to be voting, okay? Not like they have any fucking standing to determine who is of a high enough quality to be having their vote cast, as if they're informed on the issues but somebody else isn't, right? But they're saying the quiet part out loud, okay? So understand that when I say that this is one of the key tenets of their platform, it is, whether or not they say it out loud sometimes or whether or not they keep it concealed in the background. Um, but continuing on here, so the Georgia Senate's passage of SB 241 came a week after the state's Republican-controlled House-approved legislation that would cut the number of available ballot drop boxes, slash weekend early voting days, and intensify voting ID requirements for mail-in ballots, draconian, draconian restrictions that come in the wake of two major Democratic U.S. Senate, obviously these races that we just talked about with John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. Um, so here's uh, the other 253 voter suppression bills that are across the country. So when I said it's not just in Georgia, it's literally across the entire country that Republicans are engaging in this because they're seeing what's on the horizon and they're seeing that um, as participation in democracy is continuing to increase as more people are participating and are able to have their voices heard, um, that they need to put the clamps down or else they're not going to hold power. That's basically what this is about. 253 voter suppression bills under consideration in 43 states across the country. I mean, it really is, as Public Citizen points out here, it really is a full-blown, highly coordinated attack on voting rights by Republican state legislatures. So um, I'll just give you a quote here. I mean, this is uh, uh, the best synopsis that I could um, that I could come up with myself. But in an interview with Mother Jones, Stacey Abrams, again, um, said that with the Georgia State Republican Party's latest wave of aggressive voter suppression efforts or attempts, um, quote, we are seeing again and again this version of Jim Crow in a suit and tie. So that's basically what this is. I mean, again, it's not something new. This is what Republicans have been doing for decades, okay? This is one of their staples, okay? Like I said, it's part of their platform, really, whether or not they want to come out and say it and say the quiet part out loud or not. This is what they're doing. They're not actually concerned with fraud, okay? As we just saw evidence with all of these fraud cases that were brought forward after the November election in all of these different states, they were throwing shit at the wall. They had nothing of substance, okay? There's a reason why they were getting laughed out of the courtroom by Republican judges, okay? By even in some cases, Trump appointed judges. So there's a reason why that was the case, and that's because they had no evidence of voter fraud, okay? They had no evidence of widespread voter, voter fraud, but they continued this lie in order to push an agenda like this where under the guise of protecting democracy, they're actually suppressing democracy. 